Hey there, Clay Patton on the Rural Radio Network bringing you another Friday in the field. We're back in central Nebraska, Dawson County near Sumner, Nebraska on the Beatty Farm. Bart Beatty is the producer we're talking with again this week and it's amazing the development this corn crop behind me has made since towards the end of May. For your field. You know it's been um, really really fantastic clay we've had uh, a lot of heat units this corn's really taken off um, really grown really fast uh, we've had tremendous amount of rain i believe since you were here last we were at over eight inches of rain since we put the crop in the ground and uh, got things going and um, it's just i was looking this morning as well we've got a lot of um, heat units um, well above average i think we're over 350 above average on our on our growing degree units so this crop's really off to a really good start um, we're probably a week away from full tassel and so it's uh, it's well ahead of schedule probably two weeks now while this corn crop was planted two weeks late bart says that didn't stop it from trying to catch up to be on pace with most corn crops and that's because of outstanding heat units this year well, like I mentioned, we're, we're about 350 heat units above normal for this area. And um, so I think that just goes to show you how much of an impact it makes. And we've got the heat units and how fast this crop can, can, can um, pick up and um, continue where it left, you know, where it should be. You know, like I said, we were two weeks behind planting the crop. And now I would say we're almost two weeks ahead of schedule. So the month of June was fantastic for growing crops. Well, not only seeing great heat units this year, we've also seen quite a bit of rain. The field behind me has seen nearly eight inches this year, but other parts of Bart's farm has seen nearly double that. Yeah, we looked at some of our rain gauges this morning. I was just kind of curious where we were at, and this, this field's had eight inches since we planted it. Um, some of our fields, which are about 13 miles north of here, they've had over 14 inches. So we have a six inch um, difference in rainfall in just a 13 mile um, area. So huge, um, blessing in this area for the rains that we've received. The pastures are really taken off, have done really well, which has been great for our cow-calf operation. But um, it's been, uh, been a fantastic month. I just hope July continues with, with good heat units and uh, you know, continues with moisture as well. Of course, when you receive great moisture during the year, that curtails your irrigation needs. And so far, the beaties have only had to turn pivots on for application purposes. Yeah, we've ran the pivots, you know, to, to lay a track down, to get some chemical incorporated after we've sprayed. Um, today, this pivot's running. We're putting a little bit of fertilizer on, putting on about um, 40 hundreds of rain with it. Um, we do have soil moisture probes on our pivots, and they're telling us the profiles are full, and so we're paying attention to those. Um, agronomist is here every week, and he's also checking the profile as well. And, you know, it's been a while since we haven't had to har uh, hard water um, irrigate around the 4th of July and it looks like we're going to be able to take it easy tomorrow on the 4th and, and not have to do much irrigation at all and you know if, if the rains are, are true that are coming this week um, yet you know maybe we don't even have to start irrigating for another week to 10 days which would be a tremendous blessing. Outside of their row crop farming the BD family also operates several livestock operations including hog barns and a cow-calf operation and Bart gives us a little insight into the management practices it takes to run such a diversified operation. It, it gets to be a challenge. Um, there are days that it's, it's a little stressful. We've got a lot going on around here between the crops and the cow-calf ranching operation and then with our uh, swine operation as well. But, you know, the, the key is that we've got really good employees in place that really focus on their areas. And so when it's crunch time, um, the guys that are in charge of, you know, of their specific areas, they really focus on that. And, and we shift people around to help out. And so, you know, if it wasn't for key employees like we've got, um, we wouldn't be able to, uh, to handle all the diversity that we do have. And, and it's made our success, our operation successful, and, and we continue to take pride in the diversity of it. Of course, there's many things on a producer's mind at any given time, but one of the most poignant things so far in 2018 has been trade. And it's not one that's very far away from the Beatty family farm as well. Well, it's, it's a scary time, you know. Um, trade is, is huge, especially, you know, for grains and, and for our beef operation and, and, you know, our swine operation where 25% of our hogs are exported overseas. That's huge. And, uh, you know, I think right now there's a lot of things that have to happen. You know, sometimes I use the term you got to upset the apple cart to get people to come to the table and talk about things and so right now it's there's some there's some pain going on and there's some scary issues we really don't know how this thing's going to turn out I think in the end you know trade um, 
I believe in our um, commodity groups and everything that they're really going to focus on trade and we're going to get deals done but um, it's going to take some time and, and in, the, in the end I think we're going to be better off. Thanks for joining in with us. Make sure that you come back every week to find another field for our Fridays in the Field segment on the Rural Radio Network.